None of Logic's built-in instruments are truly multi-timbral, and I say truly because the organ partially is, it responds on three different channels, but none in the real sense of what multi-timbral instances mean. Now, a lot of third-party instruments are things like Garrett and Personal Orchestra or Omnisphere or Trillion or Contact. They can respond to multiple MIDI channels. You have multiple instruments loaded in on multiple parts, each with unique MIDI channels. You can have several streams flowing through one instrument. And a common workflow is to use a multi-timbral instrument with multiple outputs so that they're all routed to discrete outputs into Logic's audio stream so that they can be processed individually. Now, it can get quite cumbersome if you have, let's say, an eight-part multi-timbral instrument to have eight instrument or MIDI tracks and another eight aux tracks to act as the destination for the output routing. There's a nice new workflow that we can access in Logic Pro X that will help simplify it, and I'm going to show you how you can do this in this video. So let's say I'm going to create a software instrument, and I'm going to create a multi-timbral instrument. Now, normally, let's say I want to create an eight-part multi-timbral one. I'd set this to eight, and it would generate eight clones of the instrument track, each generating a separate MIDI channel for each one. But I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to leave this with one part, and let's go create, and we have an instrument track. It looks like a regular instrument track. We see that little one next to it, indicating that it's the first, your MIDI channel one, it's the first channel of a multi-timbral instrument. So what I'm going to do is call up a multi-timbral instrument in here. It's going to be a third-party one. In this case, I'm going to call up Garretton, the Aria player from Garretton. I'm going to call up, let's say, 16 stereo output version. So this is a multiple output version now. So we have an instrument now that will respond to and route individual MIDI channels to specific parts and then route them to discrete outputs. So let me load in a bunch of parts here. I have an ensemble save. For those of you who don't know Garrett, and it's not that relevant, I'm just going to go through this quickly. I'm going to load in an ensemble that I set up here, and I'll just show you briefly what I have are a bunch of string sounds on the first eight parts, and here you can see that they're routed to separate outputs. So this is going to output 1, 2, this is going to output 3, 4, this is going to output 5, 6, etc., all the way up to eight parts going out to 15, 16. Now you can route them in mono or combinations of mono and stereo, but for simplicity's sake, this is eight-part multi-timbral going to eight discrete outputs. And in the mixer here, I have the volumes all fairly equal. They're panned a little bit differently. But that's all we really need to know about Garretton right now. We have this multi-timbral instance with eight parts loaded up, and they're all routed to discrete outputs. So if I play my instrument here, I'm just going to access the first part. So instead of creating additional MIDI channels now pertaining to this instrument, what I'm going to do is go to the mixer, and I'm going to hit the plus button to generate the additional auxes. Now, if I look at the channel parameters over here and I select any of these auxes, we're going to see that the channels are all set to one over here for the MIDI channel. But a strange thing happens. You see they're all set to one. A strange thing happens when I add them to the tracks area. So let me shift-click here and select all these. One is already actually in there, but that's okay. And I'm going to right-click. You can also use Control-T, but right-click and choose Create Track. And now I have all of these in here, and watch what happens to the channel assignment. These are all now assigned to discrete MIDI channels. You're probably wondering, well, that's great, but what good is it? These are aux tracks. We need MIDI tracks to record MIDI on. Well, no, you don't. Let me hide the mixer for a moment, and we'll hear now that we're going to hear our sounds loaded into each discrete channel. So they're all responding to discrete MIDI channels, and you'll notice there's no record button because aux tracks don't have record buttons on them. But that's okay. They're all automatically record enabled and ready. They're all live. And we just need to use the record key command, and we can record discrete parts. And they'll all respond to their individual channels. I think we missed our note on here because it wasn't quantized. Let me just correct that. And we can keep going. I'll just do a couple of them. And let's try one more. So just to give you an idea, we can play them back, and if we look in the mixer, they're all going to be responding on their different channels.
and of course all available for individual processing. So here we have only eight objects here instead of eight plus another eight for the multiple output. So very convenient. Now one thing is that the actual instrument track itself is designated as the first MIDI channel. So you know this is named aux1, it's MIDI channel 2, and that's named as aux2, it's MIDI channel 3, etc. So you might want to rename these. Let me just bring up the instrument again. We can of course rename them with the actual sounds we have loaded in. That makes the most sense. Like I can call this violin 1. I'll hit tab and call this violin 2. And 3 is violin 3. And I'm just looking here. Next is viola 1. Then cello 1. Cello 2 cello 3, and bass. So, quick way of having them all named and ready to go and saving yourself a lot of space in the tracks area. And when we add these auxes into the tracks area, there's some other interesting things going on under the hood. When I select the instrument parameters here, we'll see that even though these are auxes, they still have instrument-like parameters here. So we can set uniquely for each of these parts key limit, velocity, range, things like that, transpose, even score styles. Let's say this is bass, and I want to put that to bass clef, this one remains at another independent score style. So these act very similarly to instruments, even though there's no record button and they're technically aux tracks. One interesting little artifact here or unusual behavior is for the delay parameter, we can have it follow the instrument like that, or if we click hold here and set it to ticks, we can then have this set at unique values for each instrument. For example, that one's set to instrument, and this one is set to ticks with a unique value, but if I set this back to milliseconds, it'll go to instrument. So there's one or two little unusual behaviors to be aware of, but it's very flexible way of working. And we're going to continue in the next video and look at ways of storing this as track stacks and recalling them and easily bringing this from project to project without having to recreate it anew each time. See you for more in the next video.